monarch of the oceans with the ability to summon and command all creatures of the deep. Talking about the spirit and exposing the spirit of Leviathan. Aquaman, guarding and defending all that lives in the sea against the forces of evil. This demonic spirit that every one of us have encountered. Aquaman, king of the seven seas. How y'all doing? Doing pretty good. I'm here with my Russian dog, whose name is Drago. Whatever he hits, he destroys. And Brad, the shape-shifting vision casting leader. Say, guess that 90s hairband from the intro and you'll win a prize. Tell them what they'll win, Brad. Dinky Donut Cereal! If you missed that 90s hairband from the power of your woo video. Here's the answer. <laughs> so today we're going to be taking a look at part two of a sermon delivered by self-appointed South African prophet Leon Dupree. It's taken a long time to get through this sermon because almost everything this supposed prophet says about God contradicts what God has said about himself in scripture. So, short segment, uh, and uh, here in part two, we're only like 10 minutes into this hour and a half long sermon. So it's kind of short because uh, I can only do it in bits and pieces and it's a lot to cover. So, um, so before we get into that, how about another episode of Weird Things People Say? What do you say? It's like, I am so ready to give it away. Give it away. I am Erica like a woman that's been pregnant. I've been like pregnant yeah. for 11 months. You realize what you've done? and take it all the way back into the Old Testament and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God. And this is why the gospel is still good news in the world today. Because God broke the law for love. Hey pal, you just blowing from stupid town? Strike and 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 strike. I don't understand. Is there a gas leak in here? Pray as always that you anoint me afresh, that your Holy Spirit will set me on fire so the world can watch me burn for you. Snap out of it! Today we have Bill Johnson of Bethel Church, and he seems to know something about demons that no one else in Scripture knew about them. Apparently something Jesus himself didn't know, namely that demons are attracted to injuries. And there's anybody who's got chronic... You know what, let's go for chronic pain. You just got chronic pain or somebody, the Lord's gonna do a creative miracle in the upper part of the back where there's a degenerative condition and uh, uh, there's somebody who, you, there's a, uh, you're in an accident and um, it, is there anyone here that you were in an accident, you injured the upper part of your neck and when you were examined, uh, a doctor actually told you you would probably have arthritis there as a result of that accident? Who's that? Is that? Oh, we've got several people with that. Uh, you know, flies are attracted to decay. The demonic is attracted to injury. What did you just say, Bill? Uh, you know, flies are attracted to decay. The demonic is attracted to injury because they want to sustain the effect of the injury past its normal course of hearing, healing. Listen to me, because the Lord's going to heal a bunch of people tonight that have had problems from accidents, uh, crises that you've had throughout the years, and it's been 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and it should have been healed a long time ago, and the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. He has no right to sustain the effect of that thing. And uh, No bueno. Last time on Beware of Leon Dupree. He's a self-appointed prophet. He, he appointed himself as a prophet of God. And, and his disciples, they really believe he is a prophet of God. It's, it's scary. Now, this one lady responded in a comment to one of my other videos. She said, don't touch the prophet of God. You have been warned. So I said, when did God say Leon Dupree is a prophet of God? 
Well, she didn't answer, and they won't answer because they've just been completely swallowed up by this wolf, this false teacher, this ravenous Leon Dupree. So we're going to be listening to what he has to say and responding with what God has said in his word. And we're going to go slow. There's a lot to respond to. Almost everything this man, Leon Dupree, says is false. He said like this, when Jesus said these words, I give unto you authority. I give unto you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Did he say, I give unto you authority to ask me to trample on serpents and scorpions? Are you guys with me? Meaning that when you cast out a devil, it is you and not God. Are you guys with me? And all believers has the gift of deliverance, has the gift of tongues. When I say the gift of tongues in terms of praying in other tongues for your own personal prayer language. Are you guys with me? Some people get confused and they and they say, no, you know, uh, God let me. Um, uh, or, or can you please deliver this person? Or can you deal with this situation? And in the meantime, he's given us authority to do it. Are you guys with me? Just before the end of the sermon, I'll prophesy over a few more people that I see in the crowd. That, um, uh, that I see in the crowd. Are you guys with me? Wherever you're going right now, you are a living stone. You have an open heaven every time over your life. Are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? It determines whether you, you see, you can, you can, the Bible can say you have an open heaven, but if you don't believe it or know it, you don't have to understand it. You just need to know it. Then wherever you will go, there will be an open heaven. Where there's open heavens, there will be visions. Are you guys with me? He didn't say if I will not, if I will not open for you. Are you guys with me? Just to tell you the, just what am I doing? I'm taking the scripture and I'm just making, I'm just solidifying the revelation that I told you that there's an open heaven everywhere you go. Say this with me. Are you guys with me? 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 Say it again. Are you guys with me? You are the open heaven. And we're going to point out every false thing he says by God's word. Because God's word is truth. I think we can all agree on that. So if you're a disciple of this man and you have a problem with what we say, please don't get on here and warn me or try to scare me or call me names. Please address the scriptures we bring up here. They are God's words. He spoke them. He literally spoke the words we're going to be using in scripture. Okay? Okay, here we go. We now join your regularly scheduled programming already in progress. So say with me, God will pour me out. Well, no, I'm not saying that with you because it contradicts God's word. God poured out his son, not me, his son. That's what God himself said in Isaiah chapter 53. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Well, no, I won't be saying what you just told me to say. Why would a prophet from God ask him to say things that contradict what God has said? He wouldn't. This is no prophet sent from God, clearly. So I want you to get this understand. That's how important tithes and offerings is. Because you take this promise upon yourself and you begin now to walk as an open heaven. And then God will take you and pour you out to others. That means you're not sitting and waiting for a blessing. Because if you can bless others, you must be blessed. The blessing he poured out from heaven in Malachi is his son, Jesus, the perfect priest. This is what the book of Malachi is about. Uh, we covered this in the... Um, uh, Robert Morris, Jesus is God's tithe video. Um, the book of Malachi is about the corrupt priesthood of God's people and the perfect priest God himself provided from heaven. Now, Leon is saying that if you give your tithe to him, God will pour you out from heaven into other people's lives. This is this is the new, uh, 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 you know, like um, 
the new, <laughs> what's that word? You speak English pretty well for a Martian. The new spin on the uh, prosperity gospel. It's not about greed, they say. You said, hey, I don't want this stuff for me. I'm going to give it all away to other people. God bless me so I can bless you. Yeah, right. God provided a blessing from heaven in his son in atoning for our sins, like it says in Isaiah 53. But that's that's not enough for Leon. He needs other things. I mean, he needs your money. He wants your money. He wants your tithe. He's hungry, this uh, false prophet, this wolf. Are you guys with me? That's like a tired record. You, you only have about six things you say. This is why we're always asking God, please bless us, please give me this. And in the meantime, he wants us to catch the revelation, give to others stuff. By others, he means him, uh, Leon. And that is not what the scriptures say in Malachi. And you'll become the vessel to whom I will bless them through. Jesus, that would be Jesus, not me, not you, not Leon, Jesus. Malachi was prophesying about Jesus, the perfect eternal priest. You are the open heaven. Blasphemer! Jesus, Jesus is the open heaven. He says so himself in John 1. And the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip. Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. One of those prophets being, of course, the prophet Malachi. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him. Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. How do you know me? Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe you will see greater things than these? Most assuredly, I say to you hereafter, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, this is Jesus talking to one of his disciples, one of the twelve, and he didn't tell him that he'd be an open heaven through whom God would bless the world, but that he, Jesus, who was prophesied by all the prophets, including Malachi, would be that open heaven, that blessing sent down from heaven. Now, the Bible does say that we are able to be a blessing to others through our giving. The apostles sent by Christ to teach us all that he commanded instructed us in this manner in many places in the New Testament. But this prophet here isn't going to touch their words. He's going to go back to an Old Testament prophecy about the coming of Christ to try to deceive people into thinking that they are going to receive financial blessings so that they might bless others financially. Are you guys with me? That we mustn't think of heaven and blessings to be put out there. You are the window of heaven. That's the blasphemy. The floodgates of heaven. For out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's John 7. This prophet doesn't want you to know where that is in the Bible because he doesn't want you to read it and know that he's not being truthful with you. It's not heaven coming out of you. It is eternal life inside of you welling up inside of you and producing life, producing holiness, producing the righteousness of Christ, which is life itself. Uh, his righteousness is what keeps us alive in the presence of a holy and a righteous God, only the righteousness of his Son. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. If anyone thirsts, let him come to Jesus. Not me, not you, certainly not Leon Dupree. He never even read this passage. That's why he doesn't want you to read it. In this chapter, chapter 7, Jesus gives an extended teaching on the fact that he is the one sent from heaven, and all who believe in him would be saved uh, from the judgment of God. We would receive the Holy Spirit, his righteousness, his holiness, and having received it, we would live forever. It's not a fountain placed inside of us that comes out of us, out of our bellies, and gives life to other people. 
Are you guys with me? The word windows of heaven is floodgates, which is the floodgates similar to a dam wall, a sluice gates, that once a threshold is hit, the sluice gates opens and water rushes out, but it does not open until a threshold is hit. Are you guys with me? And this blessing is Christ. He's a pretty big blessing, a pretty big deal. Not to Leon, though. To Leon, we're the big deal. And, and Jesus, you know, he came at an appointed time. Read the Gospels, particularly the Gospel of John. And take note of how many times the phrase, the time was not yet come, or his time was not yet full. This was something God had in store for all eternity. Oh, and, and you know why he keeps saying, are you guys with me? Because he's making it up. If he were just teaching a text from God's Word, he wouldn't have to keep asking if we were with him, because we'd be with him, reading along with him. Now similar to the anointing on your life, when there's rivers of living water inside of you, Jesus said, it'll flow out of your soul with you, my belly. That's not what Jesus said. We just read the text, prophet. The jig is up. My spirit, it'll flow out of my most innermost being. But it cannot flow unless the sluice gate is open. How is the sluice gate open? Because I'm now a floodgate. It must hit a threshold. Which means I must become so full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Spirit. Many people are ministering on empty. Are you guys with me? Now, the Apostle Paul writes about being filled with the Spirit in Ephesians 5. He said the Holy Spirit empowers us to live holy lives in our marriages, in our families, in our work. You don't say nothing about no floodgates of heaven being opened in our stomachs. These false prophets are obsessed with their stomachs. Have you noticed that? Just like real wolves, all they can think about is their bellies. Get in my belly! Or they're living life on empty. And there's a danger in this. Let me show you. Are you guys with me? So if you're living on empty, I want to get, I want to touch a little bit on persecution, eight perils, eight dangerous things that will happen to you because of the anointing. Yeah, that's enough of Leon for now. <laughs> Tune in next week for yet another installment of Blasphemy with Leon Dupree, where you'll hear the prophet say this. Are you guys with me? 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 Yeah, the, the prosperity gospel continues to be a real challenge uh, in Africa, uh, Zambia included, because it's it's basically a dangling carrot. It it it's it's it causes people to to chase after what they think they'll get tomorrow, but out of the one thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand individuals, one or two individuals do get those uh, physical blessings in abundance. Uh, but when you are honest with your Bible, honest with the narratives in the scriptures, honest with the, uh, the epistles that are there, you have to come to the conclusion that the, the prosperity gospel, uh, to borrow biblical language, swallows a camel and strains a nut. It's, it's, it makes too big an issue of what really is incidental as far as God's word is concerned. God does assure us in his word that he will look after us, he will provide for us, but nowhere in the Bible does God assure all his people that they will have fat bank accounts and will be completely healthy. In fact, most of the promises in scripture assume that you are going through a, a, a difficult, troublesome period, but God is coming through for you, sustaining you, enabling you from the inside to have a joy that other people who are unbelievers would not have in the kind of circumstances that you are going through. And true shepherds of God's people must give to God's people the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that produces balanced Christians.
Are you guys with me?